Welcome back to the Solution Series, brought to you by Double Radius and hosted by yours truly, Jeff Holdenrig. Today, uh, we're, we got a great guest here with Positron, Jeff Clement. Thanks for being here today, sir. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So, Jeff, uh, before we get into Positron, which a lot of our viewers are probably going, who is that? Um, I want to know, so give me your background a little bit. Where did you come from and how did you end up at Positron? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a 20 year network engineer, uh, started, uh, you know, in the lower end of things and, and really got into hospitality tech about 15 years of that, especially as in an IPTV, uh, enterprise deployments, large properties, things of that nature. Um, and most recently I was in a startup venture where I actually brought Amazon Alexa into hotel rooms. Oh, that's, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jeff and I have been talking for a little bit now and I got a chance to actually meet him face to face at high tech. Uh, hospitality showdown in Orlando. It was a great event. Uh, a lot of big names. Actually, Alexa was right next to us. We were jealous because they actually had a bed in their booth, and we just thought that would be perfect <laughs> after all the fun at the trade shows. So, Absolutely. especially the night before. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so let's talk about Positron. Can Can you give me a real layman's terms? Like, what solution does Positron offer? Yeah. So Positron is a 50 year old company. What we've been in the we've been predominantly in the carrier side of the business. Uh, you know, pioneering things such as VDSL, Backbone, um, and enterprise switching. Um, about five years ago, um, we developed a product uh, based on G.HN. Uh, so G.HN st stands for Gigabit Home Ethernet, Gigabit Home Network, excuse me. And basically what that allows is to reuse of existing cables um, inside brownfield buildings and provide gigabit services over that. That can be coax, CAT3 or CAT5, um, extend the, the life of that technology. And basically what our GAM product does is it wraps an ethernet switch, a carrier grade ethernet switch around that technology, allowing you to manage multiple VLANs, uh, DHCP, um, you know, several different parts of a network that a standard ethernet switch would do, but basically reutilizing the technology of G.HN to produce it over uh, either coax or CAT3 or CAT5. So you, you were talking about like existing cable, CAT3, you know, CAT5, um, you know, even coax. Is there, is there anything like special that has to be done with those? Or, I mean, is it, is it just what's, what's usually used? Is there certain types that work, certain that don't? If it's coax, yeah. you're good to go. If you're CAT3, you're good to go. How does that you know, work? The great, the great thing about this tech, Jeff, is that it's really, really um, easy to implement um, and you don't have to change the existing network. Uh, oftentimes with, you know, a, a product such as Doxis, and we'll go over this from the coaxial world. You have to rebalance the network. You're constantly looking at signal levels because that's important. The way that G.HN works is we're sending tones from five to 200 megahertz on the very low end of the spectrum. And that goes over the, over the twisted pair as well. What that allows us to do is not worry about how much loss is coming across that. So for example, on uh, a 24 port uh, GAM, which has 24 ports and each one of those have a coaxial output, we can support up to 16 end devices on each port. So theoretically, uh, in a perfect network where there's no amplification, we can serve up to 384 end units with one 24 port GAM and still provide gig service to all of those units. And I can see where that's actually a big play in the in the MDU space. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. And now, is this something that just only works with like in building applications, or do you have like uh, you know, could you do this for you know like a, a community, uh, you know, rather you know, let's say assisted living, or maybe even just like a gated a gated neighborhood? Yeah, you 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 hit one of our specialties, and when we're able to go in a garden style or campus style um, environment, we really excel because not only uh, are we providing that in building, but we can extend fiber where fiber doesn't need to be retrenched with existing hard line. Okay, so let's say you have an RG11 cable that is, uh, or an infrastructure that's connecting all the buildings. We can daisy chain our GAMs and reuse one of the ports on them as a backbone to deliver that service across that hard line. Uh, so it's kind of like a hub and spoke um, topology, mm -hmm. but it, it, it reduces the need to go in and retrench that fiber. Um, of course, we'll always use fiber where it's available. Um, we have two uh, SFP plus ports uh, that are 10 gig capable, um, but where it's not, we're able to extend that uh, that that gigabit service across an, an older infrastructure such as that. Perfect. Now, when you, when you talk about the the products today, you say your GAM and everything else. So so what is the hardware architecture look like? I mean, there's probably what a head end piece. 
And then what, what is, I mean, is there more than just like your head end piece and then like your, your room or house or, or what do those parts and pieces look like? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really a two part, um, you know, where again, you have your head end, as you said, which is the GAM, which stands for G.HN Access Multiplexer. Um, okay. And that's uh, basically our switch, right? Our Ethernet based right. switch that's using the G.HN technology. From there, you enter into uh, the, the uh, traditional coax or cat3 network based on the different product sets okay mm -hmm. the only difference between the two product sets is one has ether or one has coax and one has cat3 as an output um, on the other end of that we do have a cpe or an endpoint okay we call that our g1000 series and based on how many ports you want we have you know a one port where it's just providing one ethernet port um, on either the coax or the cat3 uh, we also have a two port version um, and then a two port power over ethernet so that's where it gets interesting when you're trying to do property wide Wi-Fi um, in, a, in an enterprise way. Uh, we, you can actually you can you know provide power uh, to your access point, and it's a full uh, VLAN trunk as well uh, on that port. So it it supports things like Ruckus DPSK and, and things that are necessary uh, for doing a complete managed Wi-Fi solution across the campus. Um, and the second port is typically used for either voice over IP um, or IPTV. And what's, what's really cool about this solution too, Jeff, is we're able to uh, go through a transitionary period. For example, if an MDU space or, or a hotel is going through a transition from legacy TV, uh, where it's still utilizing that coaxial cable, um, we have actually have a plan and a built-in spectrum analyzer. So we can find out where those channels are lying, right? If they do get into that five to 200 megahertz range, we can notch out that range and ensure that that legacy TV is still functioning. We do give up a little bit on the reach, um, but we can still hit a gigabit at 1500 feet, even if we're notching out 20 megahertz of bandwidth. Um, so when you took a look at the, the breadth of things and you know the length of distances that you're usually running cable, we're well within you know the, the normal range of, of being able to, to, to serve that gig service out. So, and then when you uh, move away from that legacy TV, you can now go room by room because you're simply just taking that secondary Ethernet port, plugging that into the set top box or to the, the TV set, and you don't have to take segments of the network offline to reutilize that service. So uh, what we're finding is, you know, our, our LSPs and our installers are loving that because now they can go at their own pace. And sometimes even the property management can do that. It's as easy as plugging it back in instead of having a support engineer there at all times supporting the project. So that brings up two good points. So you can coexist with other services today, right? Which absolutely. Is and yeah, then absolutely. having the POE outport, like you said, being able to tie that to a WAP, you know, that's huge in a multi-dwelling. Um, I, I think of this a lot of times, and you you probably know better than I do, but, you know, I think a lot about our WISPs and, you know, they're, they're bringing broadband to areas. And you think of, like, for instance, I'll talk about the Southeast. We're in like these old colonial style neighborhoods or, or towns mm -hmm. and they have yep. all these government buildings and all these enterprise buildings that are that are old architecture that they don't want to change being able to use that existing cabling that's already in place not have to spend a fortune on renovation uh cable poles new cable poles now to ask you a question real quick is you, you're bringing up gig speeds now yep. are the speeds that you're providing are those half duplex or full duplex yeah, full duplex, and that's a big differentiator between us and, say, a DOCSIS solution or even a VDSL T5 solution, et cetera. Um, it's fully asymm uh, asymmetrical. So uh, we're gig up and gig down. Uh, okay, so that is the max. Each one of the G.HN ports can actually support up to 1.7 gigs asymmetrically. Um, and then based on how many endpoints you're hanging off of that, we actually can dynamically uh, manage the bandwidth that, that goes across it. So. For example, if we have eight um, different endpoints off of one G.HN port, we're monitoring that to ensure that the subscriber, which is the end user, is getting what they're subscribed to. So for example, if they're subscribed to a 500 up, 500 down service, and they're asking for that or, or pulling a download, we're going to prioritize that traffic to them. Um, because there's a very little chance that there's going to be an, you know, all eight of those subscribers asking for all of that bandwidth. So to the end user, they're able to get that speed as they need it, and it fills their needs, just, just as a CMTS uh, would on, on the DOCSA side. But we're providing a higher level of service, a higher level of bandwidth, 
which makes it much more easier to, to manage at that point where there are some definite downfalls on the upstream uh, for Doxis. So can you, uh, based on that information, can you do rate limiting? Absolutely. Um, typically uh, in the hotel side, that's ha handled by either the wireless controller mm -hmm. or uh, say the gateway that's on property or the splash page. But in the MDU space, this is one of our most, re most used features is being able to basically through our APIs, you could have a portal login if somebody signs up for service, say 250 up, 250 down, they can actually provision that device through our APIs and send that subscriber and limit that modem. So as soon as they sign up, they're authorized, their payment goes through, it'll light up um, that endpoint to provide that 250 up and 250 down. Okay. So outside of, I mean, obviously this is this is definitely a key in in the hospitality MDU space. I mean, you can see. I've had so many conversations over the years with people where this would have been a perfect fit. And honestly, I didn't know about it. That's why I'm glad we've been talking and we've met and everything else. Um, so outside of that space there, what do you see like your biggest uh, driver deployments today? Like what yeah, market student, space would you see that? in? You know, student living, uh, it's absolutely huge. You know, universities where they have, you know, that campus style um, apartment complexes where, you know, kids these days, they want, they want their bandwidth, right? And this provides using that existing space without having to recable. Um, also senior living is also huge because typically those, a lot of those buildings are older, right? And they don't, they were never built for that infrastructure. And for an ownership group to say, you know, this much investment in, in recabling, it doesn't make sense, but believe it or not, seniors these days, and I know this from my time at Alexa too, we deployed Amazon Alexa and senior living centers too. They're, they're getting online and they're using this. And as that generation, you know, gets younger and younger or technologically younger and younger, they're going to want that bandwidth. So it makes a lot of sense in that area as well. And then even corporate America, right? I mean, if you have these huge buildings, high rises where they're ju it's just too much to recable and to re get that internet out, it's a perfect scenario for the, us to come in um, and provide the solution get gig uh, to each one of those endpoints as well. No, that's, that's great information that, that, that hits the nail on the head. I know you brought up the assisted living. It's funny because, you know, we've been doing a lot with, you know, um, uh, with Wi-Fi and, and, you know, enterprise Wi-Fi and everything else. And I remember some of our clients used to talk about how the, the residents would be like two or three devices and talking to them more recently, it's like, yeah, we're up to about 16 to 20 devices per, <laughs> you know, per resident. It's like, it, yeah. it's just changed. All the dynamics have changed. So, Absolutely. As the technology gets easier and more accessible, uh, the more bandwidth is needed and right in mm -hmm. accessibility. So, and that's only going to get greater. That's awesome information. Um, so now where do you see, I mean, do you see like a, a future in the aspect of, or what do you see Positron doing or the solutions that you're offering? Where do you see them going over the next, you know, one to three years? Yeah. So over the one to three years, we have a very, very aggressive plan is to work from the carrier level, uh, down to, you know, the ownership groups, franchisees of hotels, uh, to the REITs, uh, to get them educated on the technology. Because really right now we're in our evangelistic stage, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're telling the world about G.HN and the benefits of it. Because as you said, Jeff, not a lot of people know about it. But the more you do research on it, yes, it is. A, it just came out in about 2018, but the possibilities are endless. And this is only wave two of the technology. There's wave three coming out that have the possibility to get us up to 10 gig over this existing 80 year old cable called coax, which is absolutely amazing. Right. But you know what? Those guys designed a shielded cable that has mm -hmm. incredible bandwidth that can go across it. And we're just opening that up across that cable. So, you know, where we see ourselves is, is really pushing on all sides of the markets, but our most, most important is, is partnerships. Um, getting the WIFs, getting, you know, LSPs and people out there smart about this technology so it can reduce your, your sales cycle. Because mm -hmm. if there's ever been a blocker this day and age, it's recabling. The cost of going into those walls, putting ethernet, bringing GPON in, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And especially in those brownfields. Now, if you have a solution that could be a sixth of a cost of that, and by the way, we can give you the same speeds as if you were to recable, what's stopping them now, right? Because mm -hmm. they know they need to get that service. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not only a performance game, but it's also a pricing game, right? When when you talk about this product, which is which is really exciting. Well, the other side of that, you look at like even supply chain for for cabling and and, mm -hmm. and work staff and everything else. I mean, this gives you ability to use what's in place you know, at a cost effective way without investing a ton of money and a ton of lead time, you're doing something today 
and and getting up and running at a much faster pace. You know, it's you the same it. hey, Jeff, I'm going to I'm just, I'm going to actually record you because that, that was a perfect way to stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see the same thing like with our with our WIS. We have we have a ton of people today that, that are deploying fiber, fiber, fiber. But what's it take? Does it take one to two years? Deploy wireless now. Same thing here. It's like, you know, WIS, I'm going to tell you right now, you're bringing connectivity to your clients. Right. You need to look one step further. How do you become sticky? OK, here's a here's a way to use your your existing buildings that maybe cannot be a new cabling. And now you've offered a service all the way to the to the laptop or even to the to the resident or to the resident. Um, yep. and, and same thing with doing your Wi-Fi. I love the POE out being able yep. to put that to a lap and and supply Wi-Fi to those residents, a wall plate, a, a ceiling mount. Um, you know, those are those are just huge. Or even you could probably even do a video surveillance application with it. Right? Absolutely. So, Anything that's yeah. IP based we could do. And mm -hmm. you know, one of the one of the coolest things that we were talking about and, and, and really caught my mind is, is what we're really doing is we're bringing fiber to the economical point, right? So the, the economical point being, it doesn't matter how that's delivered, we're still providing that same service without going through those doors. And that, I've used that a few times in my pitches to you know ownership groups and even the brands. And you, you, you see them kind of, okay, I get it now, right? It, it's it not now, about, yeah. Yeah, you know, that it makes sense because it's, I'm getting the same seed and spot fiber mm -hmm. and I'm doing it at an economically feasible way to do it. And, and I'm not disrupting uh, the infrastructure of the plant, mm -hmm. right? And there, there's something to be said about that as well. Okay, we're gonna refiber, you know, we're gonna put GPON in this entire hotel or we're gonna re, you know, do structure cable in CAT6. Okay, here's the cost. But what's the mm -hmm. actual overall cost when you're entering into every one of those rooms, going into those walls, pulling that cable, disruption to guests, especially in hospitality, you're, you're losing revenue every day that that room is down right yep. if i can save you know hey we're in and out of that room in three minutes as opposed mm -hmm. to three days or three weeks there's a huge economical impact on that when you're talking in some about places that. you probably have to go through permitting just to get that taken care of too so 100 I mean, more yeah. delays you know yep and all, all we're doing is just using that same old cable that's behind 95 percent of tvs in, in america right now so now jeff that's a bunch of great information so uh, is there anything else that you want to add that we didn't cover over today no, I think, you know, you know, the key takeaways, you know, about Positron is that um, we manufacture everything in Canada. Um, we do use, obviously, chipsets that are from everywhere else, but we're very proud of, of our manufacturing process. Um, also, uh, the back end of our technology, we have full JSON API support, so we can pull that into any of your monitoring softwares. Um, we have SNMP trap uh, available, and you can also manage the PoE port as well. So if there's a problem with the AP, through our interface or even through our APIs, you can bounce that PoE port uh, if there's a if there's a downed AP. So just cool. some of the cool, yeah, <laughs> some, some of the cool things that we're doing. You know, we we are truly a networking company, and we we you know we have very much a lot of experience of what the enterprise network needs. Now we're just taking that and using a different medium and delivering that. Um, so just a couple more food for thought. All great stuff. So Jeff, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. To to our viewers out there. You know, reach out to us, uh, reach out to Jeff. We'll put his email address probably in one of these windows down here. You know, uh, ask questions. We'd love to talk to you more about this. Your sales reps here at Double Radius uh, will get me on the phone. I'll be glad to talk to you guys more about the solution, how it fits in your network, um, and kind of go from there. But, Jeff, we really appreciate you being a part of this today, helping us educate our clientele, and, uh, you know, look forward to doing this again hopefully sometime soon, okay? Yeah, hopefully I do. And, and thanks so much again, Jeff, and thanks to Double Radius as well. Yes, sir. Jeff, you have a good day and y'all enjoy. Yes. We'll see y'all at the next one. All right. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.